Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I want to thank all the people who bought the premium pick in the Lucas Matisse, Danny Garcia fight. Danny Garcia delivered as Garcia was a two to one underdog with the hedge you still should have made a very nice profit margin what I've done is I've uh, released that premium video to the public so the public at large can look at what that pre-fight video was all about okay I hope you give it a look let's talk about Floyd Mayweather's win over Saul Alvarez now before the fight Floyd Mayweather eloquently said the difference between me and Canelo is that I have fought Miguel Cotto and Ricky Hatton and he has fought their brothers. You know, the experience gap was wide, right? As was the fitness gap. When you're fighting a guy who is a master at space and distance, you have to be able to shorten both. <clears throat> Let's give tough guys who come inside some credit. Understand that one of the secrets to Miguel Cotto and to Ricky Hatton, and for that matter, to Jake LaMotta, who beat Sugar Ray Robinson back in the day, gave him his first loss, is that these guys not only hit hard, but these guys have above average foot speed. Right? The equivalent of Jake LaMotta today would be James Kirkland. Right? Understand, Jake LaMotta's nickname was the Raging Bull. But what these guys could do, what Ricky Hatton in particular was able to do against Floyd Mayweather to actually have him up on the ropes, was to take a step forward to literally use foot speed, to neutralize Floyd's foot speed, then to cut off the ring and to get him up on the ropes. You don't get the opportunity to fight inside against Floyd Mayweather unless he lets you or is forced to do so. Right now, Saul Alvarez <clears throat> hits hard. He hits, in my opinion, as hard as the three guys I just named Cotto, Hatton, and Lamada. In fact, Lamada didn't even hit that hard. Right, he was a volume puncher. But Saul Alvarez can't corner a Floyd Mayweather to deliver that punishment. He doesn't have the foot speed. And when we talk about foot speed, it's not just moving your feet. It's the ability to take your game around the ring. In other words, it's not just you getting from here to there. You've got to get from here to there and be in a position to fight. You're dealing with a Mayweather who has very fast hands, who fights at a very fast speed. With Mayweather, it's more than hand speed. It's actually read, recognition, reaction time. He's very fast, right? You drop your right, Mayweather's left is in there in the blink of an eye. So against a guy like this, who's kind of like a computer, Right? He's thinking fast, he's moving fast. Your small mistakes become big mistakes. If you're going to beat him, you've got to get over there. And you've got to, when you get over there, be prepared as you arrive to do something. <clears throat> That's not Saul Alvarez. Right? Saul Alvarez is a guy who likes to fight at mid-range. <clears throat> he's not trying to smother you up on the ropes like a Ricky Hatton or a James Kirkland would. He's not having his shoulder hit your body, right? We saw a fight on the undercard and it was striking. Ishii Smith against Carlos Molina. Longtime viewers know I've long considered Carlos Molina to be one of boxing's underrated gems. Molina was able to pick up one of the titles at 154 pounds. But the important thing was that Molina is an elite inside fighter. 
At times, that Ishii Smith Molina fight looked like a wrestling match because Carlos Molina was in there literally wrestling at times <clears throat> with Ishii Smith while protecting himself. The Mayweather Canelo fight never got that physical, right? Car um, Canelo couldn't get close to Mayweather like Carlos Molina was able to get to Ishii Smith to take his title because Canelo not only lacks the foot speed, <clears throat> right, to literally keep up with a fast-moving Floyd Mayweather, but Canelo's game is mid-range. It's not up close. He's a mid-range technician who's shooting a jab and who's trying to hit you with clever counters, right? He's not a guy who is going to come in with a forearm. That's not his game. And so the problem was, since he didn't have the hand speed to catch up to Floyd, and since he didn't have the offensive arsenal to actually throw real short punches up close on Floyd, what you had was a young guy looking like a puppy on a leash being led around the ring by an old master who wouldn't let him catch up with him. Right, Canelo just doesn't have that, we'll call it a Joe Fraser type game, where, <clears throat> you know, the guy who's moving, the Ali character, is on borrowed time because sooner or later he's going to be up against the ropes. Right, and Canelo doesn't have that hard lead punch. We'll call it a Joe Fraser left hook. I mean, Canelo has a great left hook, but it's not the kind of left hook that he can throw in a snowstorm. In other words, things have to be right for Canelo to get off his power shots, right? It has to be, metaphorically, <clears throat> a sunny day. He's not a guy who, when the other guy is moving, and doing things can throw that power punch with accuracy out the gate, right? He can't lead with that power shot, right? And that's a problem against Floyd Mayweather, who can. The only suspense for me in this fight, and I, I don't have a clue, I I don't understand the sport well enough to understand how anyone could score this fight a draw, right? What that third judge was thinking is really a mystery to me. Um, but the only mystery in this fight to me was <clears throat> whether or not Floyd would get a stoppage. And I have to say, when Floyd came out on his front foot, and think about it, that first round's telling. Because Floyd's on his front foot, he's controlling the action against the slugger. And let's just say, if Floyd were on his front foot like that against Jake LaMotta, trust me when I say there would have been more of a fight in that first round than there was here, right? Canelo seemed baffled, didn't know what to do, right? Needed some kind of distancing. You know, in other words, Canelo not only doesn't have the hand speed that Mayweather has, but he doesn't fight fast like Mayweather, right? Picture a Ricky Hatton. In fact, we have a first round between Floyd and Ricky Hatton, where if Floyd had come out on his front foot against Ricky Hatton like he did against Canelo, there would have been major fireworks. It would have been Christmas in the Hatton household. They would have said, great, if Floyd is going to give up his movement, and I'm going to make the most of this. Let me get my shopping bag and my credit card, right? You know, unfortunately here, again, Saul Alvarez fights better on sunny days. Mayweather's on his front foot. Saul Alvarez doesn't have that. I'm going to take a step forward and I'm going to throw heavy artillery out the gate like the guys I've mentioned. If you go back, in another fight involving a mover, if you go back and look at the first round of the first Ali Fraser fight, right, a fight where presumably they'd be figuring out each other. I know the hardcore are going to say, hey, they, they worked out together 
fair enough. But in that very first round, you're going to see Joe Frazier actually tries to throw several left hooks. Right? He didn't want a trilogy. In fact, he didn't even want that fight to go six rounds. Right? There's a threat of imminent danger out the gate. That's not Saul Alvarez at 23 today. Right? Alvarez is a slow starter. Alvarez really is a technician who happens to hit awfully hard. And he's not the kind of technician who wants to fight you on the inside. And he's not the kind of technician who's going to throw caution to the wind. So if you, in the opening quarter, have your cornerbacks up on the line, again, another metaphor, let's say we're playing football, he's not the kind of guy who's going to say, okay, they're daring me to go deep. Let me go deep out the gate. He's more cautious than that. That caution cost him against Floyd Mayweather. Alvarez wanted to go 30 miles an hour <clears throat> and then to methodically land hard punches. Floyd Mayweather forced him to go 50 miles an hour and the kid, quite frankly, couldn't do it. Didn't even have the foot speed to catch up to Floyd Mayweather. So let's talk about guys who, in my opinion, would give Floyd more problems, right? First, I believe you have to do one of two things with Floyd but they both involve foot speed, right? Either, and you've heard me mention James Kirkland here in this video, either you have to fight the kind of fight Jake LaMotta would fight against Ray Robinson, and let's get real there. Robinson only lost the first fight, right? But if you're a heavier guy, like LaMotta was by a wide margin over Robinson, like Canelo was by a wide margin over Floyd Mayweather, if you're the heavier guy, you got to make your weight an issue. And you've got to use foot speed to make your weight an issue. You've got to get the other guy up on the ropes. You've got to throw volume. Right? That's the other thing. Look at the number of punches Canelo landed in this fight. Less than 200, folks. Look at the CompuBox. You've got to throw volume. You've got to land some of that volume. And you've got to lean on the other guy. You've got to smother the other guy. Think Kirkland. Alfredo Angulo, right? You've got to go over there. You've got to force Floyd up on the ropes like he was against Ricky Hatton. And you've got to find a way to keep him there. Negate his speed by pinning him, by throwing volume. If you're a bigger man, you've got to use that bigger weight. Right? If you're a bigger man and you're outside or mid-range and you're not leaning on Floyd Mayweather, then what's your weight really accomplishing? Right Now, that's one way to give Mayweather problems. History has shown it. Right, Those Ali-Joe Fraser fights, you know, Ali's up on the ropes. Joe Fraser was called Smoking Joe. He's in there throwing power shots. He's trying to hunt down Ali. Ali's on the clock, right? He can't just stay in the middle of the ring, move to the side of the ring, have Fraser come over, then just move away, have Fraser follow him for 12 rounds, which is what happened last night. No, he's on the clock. These guys are cutting off the ring. If you can't cut off the ring against an Ali, then you're just Sonny Lister, getting hit on the outside, right? Canelo couldn't cut off the ring on Floyd Mayweather. If you're a big bully with weight who wants to throw that around, you've got to have the foot speed to cut off the ring. The other way to beat Floyd Mayweather is with length. Right? You're not going to do that if you're shorter than Floyd and have a shorter reach. Right? I'm talking about guys like Amir Khan. You know, I'm not saying necessarily that Kirkland, who looked bad against Carlos Molina, or Amir Khan, who has had some problems in fights, necessarily come in and beat Floyd Mayweather. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is they would have a better shot than Canelo. Because understand, Amir Khan, for all of his problems, has foot speed. Has a great jab when he wants to throw it. Can throw and score punches and win rounds from distance. He doesn't have to get in your solar system to win rounds. Understand, a fight against Amir Khan doesn't begin until 
you find a way to deal with Amir Khan's hand speed and length, right? And Khan's not going to be led around the ring like a puppy, right? He's going to be outside throwing slick volume. Now, there is a way to beat him, obviously. Lamont Peterson found a way to get inside on Khan. I would assume that for the biggest fight of his life, Khan would make sure that he's physically fit, physically sound. And let me point out, that's another thing that's a problem with, with Canelo, right? He gains 15 pounds after the weigh-in. It slows him down. Right? He didn't have the movement or the intensity. Wasn't the intensity lacking from the latter part of this fight? Right? You know, Canelo didn't look to me like he had the ability to turn up the heat in a fight in which I thought he clearly lost the first six rounds. Let me point out, I'm not alone. Dan Rayfield of ESPN scoring the fight live thought that Canelo lost the first six rounds. There were a lot of fighters who would lose the early part of a fight and then flick the switch, understand that they're on borrowed time. Even if it means that they get sloppy in the ring, they would try to hunt you down, right? Amir Khan would have to be prepared for 12 rounds and would have to win some of those early rounds against Floyd Mayweather. You're not going to beat Mayweather if you give away the early rounds. Amir Khan, we saw him against Zab Judah dominate that fight out the gate, right? A quick starter like Amir Khan with hand speed and foot speed would be a problem. Keep in mind, Amir Khan took the first two rounds against Danny Garcia. I want people to reinvestigate the fights Amir Khan lost, right? A Floyd Mayweather fight would be interesting. If he loses those early rounds, as he did against Zab Judah, another guy with hand speed, but then can't find the guy, has to catch up with the guy, has to deal with the guy's length to try to get back in the fight. I think Amir Khan would be a problem for him. Also, hand speed, foot speed with accuracy and power. Kel Brook would be a problem for Floyd Mayweather, right? You want to see great movement in the ring? A guy with hand speed out of a southpaw stance who moves and who literally diffuses a slugger? Take a look at the Devin Alexander Marcus Maidana fight. Devin Alexander would be a better opponent for Floyd Mayweather than Canelo. Let me name one more guy, and this guy to me is the most intriguing of the bunch. Is this the Mayweather era? I know there's another group that believes that this is actually the Pacquiao era. Fair enough. Whose era is it if the same guy beats both? Right? I think Timothy Bradley, who certainly has the foot speed to keep up with Floyd Mayweather, who certainly has an inside game to keep up with Floyd Mayweather. And keep in mind, there's a height gap between the two guys. Bradley is the shorter guy. He'd be hard to find long before Lucas Matisse surprised us by beating Lamont Peterson. Timothy Bradley beat Peterson, right? The point is, if Timothy Bradley, and keep in mind, his next fight's against Juan Manuel Marquez. If he beats Marquez and then succeeds in beating Floyd Mayweather, and let's also remember, too, Timothy Bradley's unbeaten, right? Then, can we call this the Mayweather, the Pacquiao, or the Marquez era if the same guy has beaten all of them, right? Understand, those guys are tougher matchups for Floyd Mayweather because of the hand speed, the foot speed, what they would do if they got Mayweather up on the ropes. What happens at the start of the fight? Are they faster starters than Canelo? They're all tougher for Floyd than Saul Alvarez. Now, boxing is a business. It is prize fighting, right? You know, Saul Alvarez has a lot of fans. At the end of the day, you're trying to monetize that fan base. Floyd's a great businessman. The money team has delivered, right? I said before this fight, I thought the Robert Guerrero matchup 
was tougher for Floyd than this matchup. I encourage viewers to go back and look at that Robert Guerrero film, right? Just imagine a guy who couldn't match Ray Robinson or Ray Leonard in foot speed, who wasn't the kind of guy to actually smother opponents, wasn't going to get them up on the ropes and try to rough them up like Jake LaMotta or Roberto Duran did, right? And what if I told you that that guy was also a slow starter, right? You would have the fight that you had yesterday. Floyd Mayweather is an all-time great. When you think of Floyd, you need to think of him the same way you think of Robinson and Leonard, the two sugars, right? You know, if you don't know how to deal with their hand speed, their ability to use space and distance, their ability to get in, hit you, get back out quickly, right, to prevent you from countering them, then you're lost in the woods. You're as lost as Canelo was yesterday, right? There are some fighters out there with hand speed and foot speed, right, and an ability to fight inside or an ability to keep the fight outside and force you to try to find them. Right? Let's hope Floyd Mayweather considers giving some of those guys a shot. Right? Yesterday was big box office. I'm sure that that fight shattered records. Um, I went through the MGM. I have never seen that casino as much of a zoo as it was in the hours before that fight. No question about it. Right? But from a boxing perspective. In terms of matchups, that wasn't a great fight. Canelo just didn't have the speed to his game or the ability to throw around his weight to make it a classic. Right? That wasn't Leonard Hagler. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. As always, thanks for stopping by.